Hello, beautiful souls. Victoria Amador here with Soul Healing Tribe. And today we have NJ. And NJ is going to be talking to us about her journey. Um, yeah, I'm just going to let you introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm MJ Marshall. I met Victoria off her YouTube channel. I just thought everything that she was saying was going had uh, aligned with what I was going through. I had some wonderful things, but scary at the time happened to me while I was meditating and I was looking for answers. I saw Victoria's page and I had been following her and she had gave me this inner strength just looking through the videos. So I remember I just got on your your uh, your website and I booked it. And I know you were probably like, what? Who in the world? <laughs> Yeah, normally people want to talk and we want to make sure that the program is going to work for them. And, you know, so when I saw your name come through, I'm like, who's MJ? <laughs> in my mind, I felt like I had already knew you just by watching your videos. I had felt very comfortable with you. So I was like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, tell us again, what was happening when you decided to book? Like, I know that you mentioned that there were some things going on and I know that you were doing some astral projection. Anything else you want to share about that? <laughs> yes, the astral projection is something that I had been doing about 12 years ago, but then I stopped because I was scared. I was fearful of a lot of different things that were happening to me, a lot of negative experiences, a lot of negative energy. And I just totally decided that I didn't want to take that route anymore. I, I didn't want anything to do with it. I know it may sound crazy to some people because astral projection is the thing now. Everybody wants to astral project now, but I didn't want anything to do with it. <laughs> yeah. And so last year was a year where I felt that, like, if I can do this, like, it was my curiosity. It was so intense. Like, I don't want to leave this planet knowing that I never really, really went into it deep. Why am I so scared of it? Right. You know, so I decided that I was going to start practicing again. I would start practicing again, but it was still coming up those negative experiences. And then what came up was like the dark. All of a sudden I realized, you know what? I can't sleep without the lights on. And I had been doing that for years and I, I didn't realize why. And so I knew that I wasn't going to turn off the lights. Right. And then I would, I would try, like, I would like have the lights off and then I'll be standing at my bedroom door and it'll be dark in there. And I'm like, mm. <laughs> going. <laughs> oh man, and the adventures. Was, yeah. And it's like, you know, the thing is, I was like, why as an adult, I'm so scared to go in the dark. Like, what is it? Something was happening and I could feel it. Something was strong happening in my body. I didn't know what it was, but I knew I wanted answers. I wanted to um, learn about astral projection. And you talked a lot about that in your videos. And I just, I just, you know, decided to try the the program. Um, so <laughs> I know it's been a while, right? <laughs> it's been a year <laughs> since you started the program. What can you share with us? I know some things are too intimate, but whatever you feel comfortable sharing with those listening um, about your journey from the beginning to like the end of the program. Okay. So our um, at our initial meeting, when you started to change the direction into my promo, my wounds, my family, I was taken back by that because I didn't know why we were talking about that. Like, I didn't get it at all. I'm like, what? But, you know, I, oh, let's get to the good stuff, you know? <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't know that. <laughs> but so what do you mean that I started changing? <laughs> because I had shared with you, you asked me why I was there and I shared with you everything about the astral projection, everything about I had a family member that I was concerned about that had some uh, mental health issues going on. And I I just wanted to see how I could help on a spiritual level, right? 
Gotcha. And then when we started going into my uh, uh, childhood and I was like, because I had never spoken to anyone about this before. I've never had a, a, a therapist or to sit down and really talk to somebody about all those wounds. I may have talked to, to somebody, but they, they didn't have the skill set to actually help me with those things. It was just like, oh, man, that, that really sucks, you know. But it wasn't the skill set to actually help me navigate through those parts of my life. Uh, there was a um, there was child abuse. There was um, a verbal abuse. There was a lot of uh, different traumas in my life that I dealt with, and I just kept it inside. And I totally built this life that was the life that I wanted, like that I, nobody showed me that as, you know, when I was young, it was something that I went out there and I got on my own and I thought everything was fine, you know, but that those traumas were still there inside waiting. It was coming out in ways that I didn't realize it. And when you open up that door to start, have me start talking about those things and we started doing the regression, right? <laughs> I started getting those aha moments to see how they were all connected, like the relationship problems that I was having, uh, jumping from relationship to relationship. I just thought that, you know, it was them and, you know, um, you know, it <laughs> didn't work out. <laughs> it's their problem. But then I started realizing a lot of that was me. And I was scared to, to commit, scared to uh, have somebody reject me, you know, if I sensed it coming, I want it out. And I, and I was sabotage it. I was out of there. <laughs> yeah. So all the, you know, those things helped me realize I have a lot of myself to work on. And it was towards, you know, the middle, the end that I saw how it all connected to my spiritual abilities um, going into my subconscious, I never wanted to do that, ever wanted to do that. And having that courage to even go in there and face those um, negative things that were just taken over me, you know, it was unbelievable. And I would have never had that courage if we, if I never went through that program, through the healing part. Like if I, you would have said subconscious right from the beginning, let's do it. I would have been out of there. <laughs> going in there. oh my god and so let me just make sure that i understand because this is the first time that i'm hearing this actually even though we spent so many hours together i didn't know this part so i changed things <laughs> according to you well, like, because oh, I just, this is what we're gonna okay, do so i didn't really go deep into it. i didn't know exactly how it worked I looked at, I'm going to be honest, I just looked at all your videos. I didn't even really know about regression, past life regression and stuff like gotcha. that. I had an idea, but when... <laughs> okay, I understand. <laughs> oh, boy. You know now. <laughs> you do. You really do now. <laughs> wow. So how how is the healing journey... Um, I guess my question would be, how is the healing journey tied to the spiritual traumas that you were experiencing? The spiritual traumas of that fear of just not wanting to use my spiritual abilities because there was this unbelievable amount of fear that I had. There's fear that still exists, but it's not fear anymore of anything really coming to get me. It's really of just the unknown, you know, but that's something that I can take on, right? And I didn't have that before. That was that personal uh, uh, empowerment that I have developed. And I didn't have that in the beginning. How so does that look it, like for you, the personal empowerment? Well, in... This physical world, what it looks like is speaking my truth because I was shy MJ when it came to my spirituality, but people didn't know me as that 
shy. They didn't know, know that I was that shy because they knew me as a person that would voice her opinions about different things. But my spirituality, I would never voice myself about that. Hmm. It wasn't until last year that people start realizing what's going on with MJ. No, MJ is finally just speaking up. Mm. Wow. So let me just make sure that I that I understand. What was the main was the main problem when you decided to do the program, the fear of the darkness, or was it something else? It was a couple of things. It was the fear of the darkness and a fear of my uh, astral projection, my spiritual abilities to do that. Okay. And um, I just wanted to see how I could help family members that I felt like had been spiritually attacked. Mm. Okay. So how, what did you realize during the process of doing the program in regards to that? So I realized that when I finally went into my subconscious and I finally dealt with what I was scared of, there was nothing to fear about my spiritual abilities. It was going in there and facing them. It was learning how it works, um, facing those traumas uh, that were hitting in there. Uh, was That was key to helping me. Uh, the darkness was that unknown part of just being terrorized. I didn't know what it was that I was so scared of. I felt like it was all connected we watched a lot of scary movies and those things I was projecting. There was intense fear. And that fear was so intense, it was giving me panic attacks. Thinking about going in the dark. And then I, it was to a point I was breathing out of a straw, like trying to, to control my breathing. Calm. That's how bad it was. Wow. Wow. So in... Well, I, I don't know how much you want to share in regards to that, but when you go through the different, the different sessions, I also know that sometimes it was a lot of up, up, ups and downs, right? Like, tell us more about that, because I think sometimes people think this is going to be such an easy ride. It's going to be easy. It's going to be flowers and butterflies. And sometimes it's not. Well, I remember our first session, um, my first session, it was, I, I remember I was scared to really, you know, let go and let spirit take over. <laughs> um, so I remember it being about a bird, right. And that was like a, the, the happiest uh, past life I had. That was the second session, I think. No, that was the first session. That was the first was session. The yeah, okay. it was a bird. Cause I played it easy. And then <laughs> We got a, a positive uh, life there. Then the other ones just were so traumatizing. Um, I felt numb with a lot of them, learning a lot of the different things that my past lives ha have done. And what, what do you I mean? just... What do you, tell us more about that. Um, the most significant one was um, about one of my past lives that I learned that he had murdered someone. And when that happened, when I found that out, I was numb, knowing that that was one of my past lives, that I'm thinking, how could part of me have done that, right? And I didn't want to feel that. I didn't want to feel that at all. So I was numb. Like, I went on, you know, with my regular day, and I didn't really think about it. So it didn't really let's, let's go back one second. So you go to a past life where mm -hmm. you... In that reality, in that past life, the man that you were had murdered someone. Yeah, he had murdered his girlfriend's uh Oh, okay. Uh, I lover. remember that life. Yeah. I'm like, which yeah. one was that? Because I didn't remember. <laughs> so many, right? <laughs> and when I learned he did that, I was numb. I felt numb about that. And I was thinking like there's a part of me that's a murderer, right? A part of my past life. But over time, what helped me was that learning what happened with him, with his father, how he wanted to please his father so much. His mother had passed away early in his life and his father just never gave him that 
loving father support that he wanted so bad. And when I felt those things, I felt empathy for him. But it happened. It took some time for it to really click. And it, because I think about those things at night when I laid my head down and and I've just, you know, I, I love that part of myself still. But it had it took me a moment to get to that point. So that was that was a difficult time for me, too. There was a lot of tears behind that there. That one was <laughs> to get to that part of it, because there was something that was happening to me that we did a uh, a regression online, me and you first. And there was something that came up. Right. And there was something that was happening to me <laughs> that was triggering it that I knew it was something that that was as profound as that, that the murder, because uh, none of my other past lives had committed a murder or anything like that. But this was something that we didn't even go th to anything in my childhood. We just jumped immediately to that, that life. Based on the symptoms that you were experiencing, you mean? Right. Okay. Right. So what and was, that was really affecting me? Okay, and so how once you started integrating that session, why why was it so important for you? It was important for me to learn empathy for others as well, because one of the things is the population that I work with. There are people that have murdered, and sometimes. I feel like I have had my uh, my own biases towards them. But to know that I have done that in a past life and I don't want to be treated as, you know, how I was treating other people or looking down on them or how others look down on them through healing. We all deserve empathy, no matter how significant or, you know, disgusting people might think uh individuals are we all are deserving of empathy and i think that was important for me for the line of work that i'm doing to yeah. have that amount of empathy for yeah. others well and one thing that i remember about that um past life that is it feels really interesting right now because i can feel my energy in like amplifying kind of when I think about that moment is that in that moment that that murder was committed, it was out of anger and jealousy. Right, right. Something that can happen in a moment when the person is not thinking mm -hmm. and they're triggered and they deal with a lot of rage and anger. It, it only takes one second to do something that then later is, is definitely, you know, regretful, you know? And you just reminded me, I, when I was younger, there was a lot of anger, aggression in my uh, in my teenage years. I had some serious anger issues, and my family can attest to that. <laughs> it was serious, <laughs> and there was a lot of jealousy as well. That came up a lot too, and that was something that I knew was happening, but I couldn't figure out why. Um, there were so many parts to that. But you just reminded me that was a part of that as well, that jealousy. And it it took me to actually, um, you know, walk away from my life because it was a choice, my business and everything, mm -hmm. to actually have not as much as I used to have and start experiencing those again, those thoughts of jealousy and stuff like that. And I would be like, why am I even thinking about stuff like that? This was a personal choice that I had. Mm -hmm. And then I would have these thoughts in my, my head, like this person has this or envy and stuff like that. Like this was a personal choice and there's, I can work, I can go get those things. But why is it happening? Because these thoughts will take over. You know, if I'm trying to listen to someone and these thoughts are circulating in my head, it can be very distracting. Mm -hmm. And those energies like from different lives, there were, I believe it was, uh, um, it was some more jealousy that took place. And I can only imagine how many more lives 
where it wasn't healed or no one had ever worked on it and it still is there. Right. But just now seeing it, I'm able to to really look at it, you know, uh, stepping away from myself, stepping away from myself. You know? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> the best way that you can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, um, a lot of the times we have so many thoughts right that that are complete i mean sometimes we don't even know that we have that thought because there is very deep <laughs> and then the more healing that you do the more you're able to like kind of go in there and go like with a flashlight like what's going on here so that's sort of what we do in in the regression work we try to go with a flashlight based on the symptoms that we're experiencing to find the core of those situations the, the origin of those thoughts and feelings. So it can be, um, I mean, it's, it's a whole universe inside there. So it's pretty interesting though, because you work with a lot of um, incarcerated people and there were quite a few past lives where you were the one incarcerated. What, what are your thoughts about that? <laughs> well, I didn't understand that <laughs> To be honest, I didn't really understand why all these past lives, everyone's locked up, everyone's going through some type of trauma, some type of abuse. And I look at all of those things and how it applies to my life. I was almost at risk of going to prison. But when I was younger, I realized that I don't want to go to prison, right? (laughs) I enjoy my freedom. I enjoy my freedom. So I decided to make a conscious decision to stop doing a lot of things that were going to lead to that, right? So I learned that kind of early in my early 20s. I learned that. Um, So I think I got that part of it. But uh, a lot of the, because I I was in victim mode for a while. I felt like a victim, like on my life, all the issues all the negative things I had experienced and learning about my past life, as cruel as it may sound, little MJ is not so innocent <laughs> based <laughs> on my past life. Well, I think those were the ones that were related to the traumas that we needed to like move out of the way and release. But I'm sure there are a lot of past lives that are very magical and beautiful, right? It's just that they don't affect us the same way because we don't really think about the beautiful things that we have. We're always very with thoughts that we don't want, right? So I think I that's think why we tend just... to find those lives that are traumatizing because those are the ones that are making a huge impact on how we feel here now. Right. And I don't think the fears were impacting my spiritual experiences. The, the well, um, it wasn't... I guess the the wonderful past lives I've had, I don't think there was a need for those to really come out because that wasn't impacting my spiritual experiences. Everything that was impacting that was the trauma, the, the fear, all the heinous acts that were done. Mm-hmm. Those things were the ones that had to be, you know, energy had to be released. People had to be forgiven. I had to forgive those past lives. Those were the ones because as we were doing those things, it just got better and better and better. I got more comfortable with, you know, one night I would cut the lights off. The next night it wouldn't, the lights would be on, but I could just see the the, um, the progression, right? Now I'm at a point where, yeah, I can cut the lights off. I cut the lights off, go to sleep. <laughs> it feels good to sleep with the lights off. It feels great. Keep the lights on for a long time too. So <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> but when I sleep with the lights off, I'm like, yes. <laughs> like in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> I call you off. You were going to say something else. No, that was it. Um, I'm just really... I'm really content where I'm at and this one have been possible without your assistance, without your, your guidance, without you helping me with these things, because 
like I said, I didn't even know that this existed before you. It was like a lot of it was new to me, but I was so eager for relief from this, you know, relief from what I learned to be the trauma and how it was affecting me. Because like you said, you brought up that people think this is easy. There were certain lies that were coming up that led to the panic attacks. Like I didn't have them before, but then all of a sudden it opened the door for the panic attack. But that was because I had to, you know, release more things, uh, want to see the truth, you know, in certain things and how it affected me in this life. And I remember one day I had went to sleep after we had did a um, a session and the lights were on. And then I woke up holding my heart and screaming, oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> but that didn't last forever. It didn't last forever. It was just coming out. It was coming out, all those experiences. And uh, it was a lot. It was a lot that we had explored. <laughs> yeah. I, I, And, you know, I think when we start this type of deep, dive it's almost like our spirit knows oh this is the opportunity because this one didn't do much or hasn't done everything that we need to do and it's it kind of like dives so deep that we we're trying to get above water sometimes we have to tell part of ourselves like listen we need to take a chill pill today right mm -hmm. but yeah it can be very it can be a lot which is why i don't recommend people to do just one-off sessions if, no matter who you do it with right like doing one-off session unless it's something surface level it's almost like setting ourselves for failure uh, for failure because our spirit is like we're finally gonna get to do this work it is now or never that's <laughs> right <laughs> right so how long did the panic attacks last? I would say it probably lasted uh, like it was two months, but it wasn't consistent. They were like sporadic. You know, um, it probably would be like some certain things, like maybe I would watch something that would trigger it, or maybe I'd have a conversation about something that would trigger it. And then I'm like, oh, and I could feel it happening and uh -huh. um, like that. And uh, just with me tapping into that spiritual side of me of light energy and stuff like that, because it opened the door for it to move through my body, like the energy. I wasn't feeling that before. And uh, I think- Wait, what that, do you mean? What, tell me, help me understand that. I didn't quite get it. Well, it's like energy moving through my body. I can feel energy moving through my body, like when I meditate and stuff like that before- um, I started a program. I wasn't feeling that. I didn't feel any of that. But then when I started the program and we started working on um, that, I, the meditation started happening, the regression, all those things started bringing these feelings out. I could feel it through my body. Okay. And it would just make me nervous about that. Like, what and is you were that? feeling? Yeah, I would feel it. And I just didn't know what it was. I could just feel like energy and just like, you know, um, like, um, It'd be, it would be presence, but it didn't feel dark. It didn't feel dark. It just felt unusual. Okay. Like when you start tapping into that, um, uh, you know, that spiritual side of you, just different things, it feel energy. You, you, so you that, that's why because of that, because you were feeling energy moving through your body? Yeah, because that was different for me. Like, I didn't know what that was. Like, I didn't. You know, yeah, I did the astral traveling, but nothing I can I didn't feel no energy moving through me. Gotcha. So feeling the different sensations and feelings and going to meditation and going deeper created the feeling of something is wrong and having a panic attack. Um uh, for example, one of our sessions, um we we did a past life and then I could feel like a zap. Like, I'll feel like a zap. Like, you ask me, what are your sensations? I'm like, I don't 
zap. You know, those were, I didn't feel stuff like that before. And the, what it was, it was me tapping into that. And I was supposed to take that feeling, like, let's, say, let's say that I felt a zap on my shoulder. And then um, you would tell me, hey, uh, what what does it, you know, uh, feel like? What, what color is it? Stuff like that. That was new to me. And I wasn't used to feeling those sensations like that. Okay. So when you, we were doing that, that started opening up all kinds of stuff, zaps here and <laughs> taps there and just energy, you know, especially when I would meditate, when I'm meditating, then it's, <laughs> I can feel it. And I'm like, oh, yes. <laughs> right. okay, I get it. I thought you meant like you were having panic attack because it was too much, what you were going through and I don't know. What, what panic, panic attack was just like the, the new sensations right. i had to get comfortable with those types of sensations yeah and it the one that really gave me a difficult time was just uh one certain uh past life that was traumatic the way how he he died and that one w was the one that i woke up like clutching my heart because that one was that one was a lot right 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 and <laughs> You know, when we start doing this type of work, you're right. We're, we're going to start opening ourselves to the other realities and what is happening to us in other realities. So all the sensations is almost like tapping into other versions of who you are and feeling what that person that you are in that reality is feeling. So it can feel overwhelming for sure. I, I understand that. But for some reason, I thought you were saying that the panic attacks were because it was too much to integrate after the session so is, is that no part of that or did I misunderstand well it was there was only like one day that was the day where I had to clutch my heart that was the panic okay. attack the panic attack was happening around that time um you know so it, it was for two months and it was off and on um so yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you finished the the program and you had the last session i don't know like a month ago has it been a month three weeks three weeks three weeks ago okay so mm -hmm. what what would you say to someone that is thinking about doing something similar to what we did what you did i would say from my experience you have to be serious that this is something you want. You got to be serious. This is what you want because you, you it's going to come. It's going to come. <laughs> the healing can be intense because what I specifically, a lot of it had to do with the healing. Yeah, I, I came for a different reason, but I realized a lot of it was the healing. So if you're coming to it because you're fearful of uh, using your abilities, it may lead up to healing. Because that's what I have learned that is connected to from my perspective. And just to, to let it take its course. Be patient with yourself. Um, you know, commit to your, your sessions. You got to keep going because the ending of it is beautiful. Like the person I am today is so rewarding. I'm so proud of myself. And my family members, they notice the change. The more, the more I'm so I have so much compassion now for what they have done in um our lives and whatnot. And they they notice it. And you know, they they mention it and you know, they're not in agreement with my spirituality, but they see the changes. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so just be patient with yourself and trust the process and uh, allow yourself to heal yeah that's that's beautiful you just finished the dirt training are you going to get ready to to do some of that for your clients or tell us what you're doing with your clients well right now i help them um with a lot of uh I'm trying to help them with the recidivism, trying to avoid that. So we do life coaching, helping them get uh, the services that they need uh, to live independently, uh, resources, food, uh, job skills, things like that. Now, if they're wanting that, that's something that I'm able to do with them, but it's something I don't force it. 
I'm open about who I am now. And if that's something that they would like, that is something that I would definitely uh, be able to assist them with. So yes, I needed to be able to do that for myself because I still, um, uh, you know, work on myself um, yeah. still. And yeah, absolutely. If they're wanting that, then by all means, I would definitely be able to help them with that. Okay. So how do you want people to reach out to you or how do your clients find you? I have a website and they can, they can book a session with me on there is through zoom. So yeah, we can do a goal is person centered and I will be able to help them. We do usually by weekly visits and um, it's a beautiful program. So they can find me on my website. And what is the website? It is a long website. I'm going to have to, uh, if I can send it we to can, you and you can. Yeah, we can put it in the long. comments. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you want to share with those listening before we finish for today? Yes, just don't be scared of the healing. It can be intimidating, but the rewards is worth more than the fear. You got this. <laughs> Got the it. power. <laughs> Thank you so much, NJ. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you. You're welcome. Shame on me. So one of the most important things that I left out in my exit interview with Victoria is about my relationship strengthening with my spirit team, including my ancestors. Prior to meeting Victoria, I just learned about a couple of my ancestors, right? I knew about them, but I didn't have a concrete relationship with them whatsoever. During this past year, and with the help of the healing, I have come to learn different techniques to communicate with them. And they have been so helpful during my healing journey. Words can't express the way that I can communicate with them now is unbelievable. Like I went from knowing that a couple of them are around last year to having full blown conversations with them now, helping me with guidance through a lot of issues that I'm facing. And it's remarkable what a year can do when you're just working on your spirituality and improving and, uh, you know, uh, different things to help you communicate better. And now I can't imagine not communicating with them. It's a beautiful experience. And my my ancestors are Nanabaluku, Alegba, Obatala, Oshun, Yamaya, Mamekumbabang. And did I say oh yeah? <laughs> I love all of them. I love you all. And I am just filled with so much gratitude. Ashe.